What are the major cause of piping failures in oil and gas and petrochemical sectors? Let's discuss about this topic extensively and we will also discuss about the solutions by which you can prevent these failures in your project. Without wasting your time, let's get started. Especially in oil and gas and petrochemical sectors, you can see lots of piping. We can even say almost 60% of the entire infrastructure is made of piping. So if you don't address these issues, there will be consequences in terms of accidents, loss of life, damage to infrastructure, damage to environment and atmosphere. So it's really important to address these issues. So let's understand what are the major cause of failure. So let's start from the first one. The first major cause of failure is because of the corrosion. In corrosion, there are two different types, internal corrosion and external corrosion. Internal corrosions are basically happens due to the compatibility issue of fluid with piping material. If the pipes and fitting materials are not compatible with the fluid, slowly the internal surface of the pipes gets corroded due to the chemical reaction. And likewise, external corrosion is due to the compatibility of the pipe material with atmosphere. Especially in the coastal areas, the atmosphere will have little amount of chloride that gets mixed with the piping surfaces and slowly it corroded it, it, the, it causes the corrosion in the external surface of the piping. So how to avoid internal corrosion first? By choosing the right MOC, by doing a lining, by doing a cladding or by making a right coating. So these are different types of approaches by which you can prevent the internal corrosion. By for what for the external corrosion? For the external corrosion you can use a right MOC and for the uh, and right painting system. So these two solutions can avoid the external corrosion. Now let's go to the second uh, type of failure. The second type of failure is erosion. Erosion is not similar to corrosion. Erosion is more of a physical impact. Even in erosion, you have internal erosion and external erosion. Internal erosion is caused due to the pitting corrosion. For example, if the fluid passing uh, inside the pipe has got a sand, and due to the velocity, the sand keeps hitting the walls of the pipes and fittings. Over a period of time, it takes away little amount of thickness of the pipe. So that erodes the internal surface of the pipes and fittings. This is known as internal erosion, which can be prevented by using right MOC, by making right uh, lining materials and by doing a cladding or by using proper coating can be avoided. And what is uh, external erosion? External erosion is basically due to the shear effect. When uh, due to the thermal, um, uh, during the thermal moment, the line moves longitudinally and axially and laterally. So during this moment, if the pipe touches uh, the structures and it will erode the external surface of the pipe. So in order to prevent this, you can either use a, a right amount of um, a support, I mean right type of a support, basically where you can use a shoe support. So that the shoe will come in contact with the structure, it's not the pipe. And moreover, when two pipes collides each other actually, that will also cause a shear movement. So you need to do a right um, stress analysis and flexibility analysis and ensure a right gap between the pipes and provide right uh, support so that the pipes will not hit the other pipes. So this is a way to prevent the external erosion. Now let's go to the third type of failure. The third type of failure is due to the pipe burst. Pipe burst is a scenario when uh, your thickness is inadequate to control the pressure inside the line. There are two cases. One is at high pressure scenario. During the high pressure, the pressure is more than the uh, calculated thickness. So the pressure, it comes out by bursting the pipes. And second scenario is high pressure during high temperature, which means the pipe is capable to handle the high pressure during the low temperature, but not at the high temperature. So what you have to do is that you have to do a right wall thickness calculation by considering the low pressure, high pressure and low temperature and high temperature. Basically, we name it as thickness calculation for appropriate PT rating. So this is to be done in order to avoid pipe bursting scenario. Now let's go to the fourth failure. The fourth failure is cracking. In cracking, you have different types of cracking. There are hydrogen induced cracking, stress induced cracking, fatigue induced cracking and weak weld joints. Uh, I mean uh, cracking induced by weak weld joints. So uh, these are different types of crackings happens at different scenarios. 
hydrogen induced cracking you can avoid by using a right lining so that the hydrogen will not um, come in uh, will not have any reaction with the internal surface of the pipes so that you can avoid it and likewise the stress induced cracking and fatigue induced cracking and weak welding joints you need to follow the proper welding procedures and uh, you have to qualify the weld joint in such a way that there is no abnormalities are found during the welding process and you have to do a right stress analysis to ensure that there is uh, uh, no uh, high amount of stress in the line and provide right amount of support actually by which you will be able to avoid the cracking scenarios the cracking scenario it happens majorly because of the uh, chemical reactions with the uh, pipe material so uh, generally for the cracking you have to use the right uh, lining inside uh, if you use the proper lining and proper cladding uh, uh, instead of using a lining you can also use a cladding so that you can prevent the uh, reaction of the hydrogens with the internal surface and by doing a right stress analysis supports you will be able to avoid it fifth scenario is line deformation line deformation happens due to different scenarios at the scenario number one is that when the temperature of the line goes high uncontrollably and suddenly cools down and uh, the, the another scenario is that when the operator um, uh, the controls are malfunction and the operator did not notice the functioning of the line so generally what happens the result will be the line gets permanently deformed and which cause an abnormal shape to the piping and it may sometimes uh, hit the nearby piping also so what to do is that uh, you need to have the appropriate operating philosophy uh, to be ensured uh, with the operators and the uh, operate uh, what you call the the plant production teams and as well as you need to uh, consider all upset conditions in your uh, stress analysis so that the line is designed for the worst case scenario if you have not design the line for worst case scenario for such upset conditions the line will experience the permanent deformation which is not a uh, right thing for to piping to have actually sixth is nozzle cracking nozzle cracking is a scenario when huge amount of piping loads gets transferred to the equipment nozzle and the nozzle gets cracked so basically this happens because of different scenarios one scenario is high stress which is being transferred and second scenario is due to the upset condition where uh, the temperature goes high or due to any surge happens in the piping so that the huge amount of force it comes all over the piping and directly comes and uh, impacts the nozzle and because of the lesser thickness of the equipment the nozzle cracks basically so the solution is that either you can increase the size of the equipment walls and nozzle uh, thickness and uh, the more uh, importantly you have to do the analysis in such a way that no stress gets transferred to the equipment so you can keep the equipment as a safer side that is why in stress analysis uh, you do uh, one of the important um, uh, what do you call primary activity is to qualify your nozzle uh, by making sure that the the transferred loads are within the allowable loads so this is it so by doing a right stress analysis and by using a right um, thickness to the equipments and nozzles and you'll be able to safeguard your piping and as well as equipments seventh is vibration Vibration is one of the major cause of piping failures. We can even say almost 30 percentage of piping failures is because of vibration. Basically, vibration causes failure more to the small bore line, which is connected to the header line. So when the small bore line cracks near to the header and it will damage the weld outlet and it will cause leaks. So this is one. And uh, there are cases where vibration causes a heavy movement and a heavy noise and at times and it will shake the entire structure it will cause the instability to the structures and supports as well so how to avoid vibrations by doing uh, dynamic stress analysis and by doing vibration control measures so you have to do dynamic stress analysis and vibration control measures as per energy institute's uh, standards basically so by this way you will be able to avoid the uh, issues which are uh, pertaining to the vibrations because vibration is one of the very critical factor in piping that needs to be controlled at any cost and the last failure is support failures support failure is one of the major cause of piping failure because when support fails naturally the piping gets failed so what are the different scenarios that cause a support failure one of the very critical scenarios water hammering issues due to water hammering issues uh, it uh, directly impacts uh, the supports by transferring huge amount of forces so that the support fails and naturally the piping also fails 
And the second scenario is that where the civil structures are weakly designed. So it is not designed for appropriate loads and standards. And the third scenario is that due to the heavy movement, due to multiple reasons actually, the huge amount of forces gets transferred to the civil structures and the structure foundation itself gets disturbed actually. So these are the main reason for the structural failures. So what are the mitigations? What are the solutions? You have to do a stress analysis by listing out the critical lines. This is first step. And the second step is after doing stress analysis, ensure that the right loads are transferred to the civil structural team. And the third step is that ensure that the civil structural teams have designed the pipe supports based on the loads which are being transferred to them. So if you ensure these three steps, you will be able to avoid the support failures. So these are the major cause of piping failures in oil and gas and petrochemical sectors. I will meet you with another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandran. Thank you so much for watching my video.